So we have been speaking. I'm not even sure my English is correct. We have been speaking. This is good English? Yes. yes. Of a great deal of experiences. And we've been speaking of a power that is not ours. Like a comment I said yesterday sitting with disciples at the table, I have rarely been invested with so much power within me. That is because it's not my power. Okay? If you think it, this is my power, it's the ego pattern power, which is similar to control and manipulation. When this divine power, it's not yours. It just happens. And there's no stress and pressure. It just It's very intense. Okay? The Nama section of acknowledgement is over. Now there are two mantras left in this process. Which are declarations. experience here. So Gu is the experience that moves you. Ru is your experience of identity. Okay. Guru is the experience that moves you. And whatever moves you is something that is superior to you. Okay. The Guru is always someone who is superior that brings you wisdom. It is not a person. Okay. Like in anything, there are four levels of understanding Guru. And the fourth level of Guru, which is the lie, is a human impersonating it. Most good Gurus know that. That they're just playing the game so you'll understand what is to be in relationship with the Guru until you can really go to the Guru. The third level of Guru is Agni, fire. Okay? It is the most powerful force in nature, fire. So the third level of guru is Agni. The second level of guru is Indra, the most powerful force in the spiritual realm, Indra. And the first and highest level of the guru is Brahm, the source. So when we chant Om Guru Guru Paramaguru, this is not a mantra we're going to do, okay, I'm just telling you. When we say Om Guru Guru Paramaguru, we're saying also, at the same time, Om Nama Agnindra Brahm. We're saying I acknowledge Indra, the Guru, uh, sorry, Agni, the Guru, Indra, the Guru, Brahma, the highest Guru, Paramaguru, okay? So, the Guru, <coughs> Om Guru, is this acknowledgement, well, in this case, there's no Nama, so it's not acknowledging, it's it's saying something. The statement is I experience because it's finished with Om. Okay? Om Guru Paramatma. Remember Om Guru Paramatma. Paramatma you change by your name. So for me it's Om Guru Mahavadra Siddhi Hum. Okay? For you it would be Om Gur Paramatma or your soul name, Siddhi. Remember when I did Siddhyaroga, Siddhi, depending on the context, like in Siddhyaroga Nam, Siddhi was perfected. 
<coughs> fully accomplished health. Okay. In this case, CD means power. Okay. The thing that does the accomplishment. <coughs> Om Guru Paratmama Siddhi Hum. <coughs> Hum is the Bija mantra of I experience it. It just so happened that you might have an impression of something on your third eye, like when you receive Shakti Path of the Guru. Okay? But it will come from your own soul. Okay? Om Guru Paramatma Siddhihum. Om Guru Paramatma Siddhihum. Now that you perceive, maybe not completely, but at least you got an experience in the last teaching. Now that you perceive for a more global view, you can perceive from the point of view of the highest Guru. You can perceive from the point of view of something that is higher, more refined, more powerful than you, which is what you surrender to. And having surrendered to that, you declare that you experience its power. Mm -hmm. Om Guru Paramatma Siddhihu. Third eye. Om Guru Paramatma Siddhihu. Okay? It's not limited to your third eye. But you might have something there. Okay? Om Guru Paramatma Siddhi Hum. Om Guru Triratna Bodhi Siddhi Hum. Om Guru Aditi Ma Siddhi Hum. Om Guru Paramatma Siddhi Hum. Okay? And Paramatma works very well if you don't know your soul name because it doesn't really matter. Okay? It's just if you want a more precise experience of how you can receive this supreme power in you and feel it. Live it, eh? whom it's living it, okay. Ham, it's the presence, whom it's living it, okay. So, practice. And I speak, but you go in your mind. <coughs> Om Guru Paramatma Siddhihum. Om Guru Paramatma Siddhihum. And you accept that you are living the power, the force, the energy, the life of that which is immense and affects you guru what affects you what affects your definition okay the one that will come and teach you okay what is the effect of that it will create something the more you do this practice the more that you accept to experience the power of the master, which is something beyond you. Okay? And the more things will just snap into place to bring you blessings, so marvelous it was. And the more stuff will snap into place to provoke you into trial. You will be more set up by your experience of the one God okay it's calling for a higher experience now some people they've been through their share of bullshit in their lives I would refer like Jerry Richella Alta your life won't be destroyed you don't need that anymore but it will help you go through the experience again of what is not yet resolved okay as for other people who say I have still strength in my bones Let's do it, okay? And you know I, uh, I teach people to become disciple. When someone wants to become my disciple instead of just my student, I say do one mala once. Om Guru Mahavara Hum, using my power, my name, as I experience it, at my level. And then when I integrate, you integrate. When I breathe, the energy of this breathing affects you, okay? There's someone I know, probably the most courageous person I know on earth, was my disciple and they said, I want to stop being your disciple. So he did one mala of, I have no master, I have no master, I have no master, dissolved the chain. 
And then he wrote an email to me saying, I didn't know how much present you were until I decided that you had to go off. I have not felt alone like this, like, long time. But nonetheless, I'm not pulling you back. I want to do it alone. And this guy keeps coming to my seminars, having dissolved my influence. He's doing it alone. And he's more powerful than any of you. <laughs> okay? So what you want to do is use your name. Unless you want to have this influence of, of my experience in your life, you won't owe me anything. A real, real accomplished being could not possibly attach to your money. I'm being paid for my natural existence to be able to cover my bills. And when I have excess money, I pay plane tickets to other people who could not come to the seminar. <laughs> this guy is sitting right there. It's like, yeah, Okay? If I would be addicted to the money aspect, I mean, I would <coughs> skip all the money that comes in and offer me luxury. What would that do? I would prove to you the importance of attachment to causes of suffering. You would have wonderful moments of self-help, new age, 50 cents wisdom, which would probably be good because it would be where you're at. No, you created yourself an opportunity to go study with someone who has destroyed these attachments. And in this lifetime, it's when I spent nine months begging as a beggar. I had everything I had, a Nintendo at the time, a TV, stuff. I was 20, what, 21, 20, yeah, 21 years old. I think, somewhere around that. And I just begged in the street. I lived as a beggar. Okay. In our society, I discovered, okay, what I've been doing all these past lifetimes, in this new society, it's not appropriate. We need to find a way to fulfill this desire of enlightenment without the begging part. Okay, But nonetheless, I've been a beggar in this life. Gave everything and lived with nothing. Sleeping on my wooden floor, and I was so grateful to have a sleeping bag instead of just directly the floor. Okay, And I would take my only... Shirt, not the preferred one, my only uh, long sleeve sweatshirt, and I roll, roll it up so I'd have a bit of pillow, okay? And I did this for a while. And it is only through these kind of experiences that I, I, I got it. In this society, there has to be a way to teach non attachment without having to tell people leave everything behind. That was Jesus and Buddha's time where if you left everything behind, you would still live. Okay? Today, if you don't have a place to lodge yourself, you're in deep trouble. Okay? And you can't <coughs> go around begging, it's not legal. Okay? Well, at that time, some people just allowed you to do that because they knew you were on a spiritual quest. They also were hoping you'd bless them. Okay? This is not appropriate anymore. But I had to go through that to understand this. Okay? So if you really want to have an example on how to do it, I today live a relative comfort. Not luxurious, relative comfort, okay? I had to go out from the big city because I wanted to be out of the big city and I wanted to pay half the price for the same size of house. And then I can permit myself not having enough money, so instead of billing you a thousand dollars for the secrets of immortality, I can just bill you the bare minimum which is required to cover my fees and if you don't have this money well, come anyway <laughs> you come to seven I'm, I'm here why should I prevent myself from having this opportunity to teach you why should I push you away because you do not have the means from the point on that I'm standing here and I'm giving you wisdom okay but if you have money and you don't pay you have karma you know you become a leech okay a freeloader <laughs> you're going to say in your life I have less and you're gonna have less okay it'll be less in comfort so you just have to be honest with yourself see I don't even have the pressure of managing how much donation you should give <laughs> okay because if you're not honest with yourself you'll cause your own suffering uh, because I gaze at you and truth happens okay <laughs> so I'm a curse <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
Unless you want the wisdom, then I'm, I'm, I'm a blessing. Okay? Can you accept that? It just looks like a curse sometimes. While you're, in, while you're in a crusade, let's say. <laughs> Maha, stop hurting me. Stop. Stop punching me. Oh, I, would you just stop? Which is, well, just drop the fucking knife. <laughs> <laughs> How can I do that? How can I do that? It's okay. Relax your muscle that holds it. Maybe you want to pull it out. <laughs> Gently. It takes time. Observation. Gently. Okay. <laughs> Give it time to heal, <laughs> joy, love. <laughs> Omaha, it worked. You're so wonderful. You healed me. No, I wasn't hurt. You were the same. At first place, I, I I didn't heal you. She wrote me. Well, then who healed my bladder if it's not you? Uh, how about yourself? How about you did it yourself? But once, please give you a bit of credit. That's not pride, okay? That's that's being grateful for yourself for your own work. You, know? you understand this? <laughs> the going out of some the other element that was me because I love you and I want to help you, but the bladder you resolved everything yourself. You know? I'm not a savior. I'm just gonna give a little push and a little help, okay? Pushing you on the back here and then supporting you at the same way because you're being pushed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel he's always in my back. <laughs> no, that are your wings, okay? <laughs> you need to responsibilize yourself, okay? So if you're serious and you want to have the feeling of being helped by someone with this kind of power, you can do my mantra, one mala, <coughs> means 108 times, once. Om Guru Mahavajra Siddhi Hum. But you'll need to be applying the wisdom. If you don't, Daily, take a few breaths to look at yourself, and weekly, take a long period of observation and integration. Your life will turn to shit. Because you ask for my influence, it's helping you go in there. You don't accept it, it'll project out and manifest your life that way. Okay? You want to stop this influence, you say 108 times, there is no master. I have no spiritual master. I have no spiritual master. I'm alone. I'm my own master. Okay? That's okay. My influence will stop. I don't have to manage this. People invoke it, it works. People will stop it, it stops working. Okay? Then you have to endure the fact that you'll have a soft landing period. Like, it'll slowly stop to influence you. Give me a week. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not doing anything. Okay? That's just a little wisdom about discipleship and mastership. It doesn't mean that someone has power over someone else. It means that we're in love. Okay? Eventually, I will push you out. I will be the one to say, you will not be addicted to me. No way. I'm throwing you out. Okay? Do it alone. But it's nice to have a bit of help, okay? This is the most important if you want to be autonomous, which is what I teach. Om Guru, my soul name, Sidi Hum. If, while you don't have it, you say Paramatma, it'll directly go get the Brahma experience <coughs> from the point of view that you can get, okay? So it's, it's okay. Om Guru, Vishneshwar Sidi Hum. Om Guru, Samanta Dharma Siddhu. Okay? To acknowledge I experience the power of the true master. It is inside, but it's not my ego. I'm my own master. That's arrogant. You're just a prick. <laughs> Submit yourself to something greater, which is also what you are, but not from your limited perspective. Until you know that, you don't know that. Until you know yourself as divine, you don't know that your God stops saying it. Meditate, process, experience, and at one point, at one point you'll say, "Oh, I am that God who created all things," and you won't feel the need to share. There will be no need of importance from someone else because you'll know, "Oh, you are, yeah, you are the God that's created all things. You are. I, I see it. I see the Creator. Wow, that's so wonderful." 
you will rather need to tell others do this do that so you can have this experience yourself because each time you enlighten I'm the one that is enlightening we're one and while you suffer I am suffering we're one I'm not always conscious of this suffering but quite often and some people know me and I've been in states of suffering once and said oh yes that's the Jirishtala's experience and I just told the story of her of her relationships without ever knowing she never told me the story I was just telling this to someone else because I was really experiencing that experience so she didn't ha not have to go through the entire thing to integrate it I just left her what she needed as a lesson but what was just slowing her down for nothing because uh, with time you know natural forces you back stuff with this kind of experience you will have power it will not be yours but there will be a power and you will be able to declare stuff and create okay and manifest events then manifest matter that's not a key key of manifestation of matter by the way okay I can teach you that another time Om Guru Paramatma Siddhikum is acknowledging that I experience the power of the master which is this higher part of me I don't know or maybe I know but it's not the ego and if it has ego then I'll submit myself to a higher power which is the way the force the one thing that exists with no definition is this good so you each take a bit of time two minutes to do the mantra using your own soul name or Paramatma, okay?